Hi, hello, welcome to a raid build video. I am going to show you six different Pokemon to defeat Greninja with based off of what we may or may not know. I did this for Cinderace and it was really successful. Uh, I, I got tons of comments on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, in my Twitch stream that the three main Pokemon I ended up recommending, the Armor Rouge, uh, the support Pelipper and the support Slowbro really helped people's families, groups of friends, Discord servers, all of that stuff. So we're going to do it again here for Greninja. And I think these raid builds are better. I spent over 10 hours calculating every single move that Greninja would have if it was special and every single move Greninja would have if it was physical against every single one of these Pokemon in this raid build. Uh, so I can safely say, I, I know before, I know I can already imagine the, the comments of like, what about Ice Punch? What about Extra Sensory? What about Water Shuriken? They've all been calculated. Every single move going into every single one of these Pokemon have been calculated. And before I show you the six Pokemon, there is debate about Battle Bond. Uh, I'm just going to throw up a tweet that I tweeted earlier this week. feel like it's very unlikely that Greninja has Battle Bond because if it does, that means Froakie and Frogadier would not be possible in the game because a Greninja with Battle Bond cannot breed and make eggs. Game Freak would have to change Battle Bond the day that Greninja is released in order for this to work. They did already nerf Battle Bond prior to the game coming out, um, but they did not change how the undiscovered egg group works with Battle Bond. So I think we'll just see the hidden ability. Uh, Battle Bond isn't a hidden ability. It's an event ability. So something like an ability capsule or an ability patch would not work um, to change Battle Bond. It's an event ability, so it can't, it can't be changed. That being said, if for some crazy reason it has Battle Bond, uh, our Pokemon and our choices don't really change uh, that much. You might see, I guess, a little bit more clear smog from your group. But other than that, uh, these Pokemon would still be the same whether uh, we have hidden ability or whether we just have Battle Bond. So I calculated stats for almost 50 different Pokemon <laughs> and then I narrowed it down to 10 and then I narrowed it down to 6. That doesn't mean that there aren't good Pokemon not here. These are just my favorite six that not only I am very confident in based off both a physical and a special moveset, but these Pokemon have incredible synergy together and you'll you'll kind of see why. I guess, you know, uh, elephant of, in the room is Claude Sire. So let's start with Claude Sire. Claude Sire is a poison ground Pokemon with the ability water absorb, meaning it cannot get hit by uh, a liquidation or a water shuriken. I'm recommending Earth Power, Acid Spray, Mud Slap, and Chilling Water with the Assault Vest. I personally believe going into these Greninja raids that Greninja will either be a special attacker or a mixed attacker. I think it's very unlikely for Greninja to be a full physical attacker, but I could be wrong. The reason I think it's going to be a special attacker is one, its special attack stat is its highest between the two, and its signature move, Water Shuriken, is a special type move. So with those two points, special attack being higher than physical attack and Water Shuriken being its signature move, I feel like we would get a special Greninja or a mixed Greninja. I don't think we would get a fully physical Greninja. A lot of my EV spreads are based on special defense. That's easy to fix if it does end up being a physical Greninja. We just flip the special defense EVs to defense EVs. But that would make the Assault Vest build here not as great. Although, if it's a mixed attacker, I think that actually makes it easier. The reason I say that is because all of my calculations were modest into special or adamant into physical. You can't have both adamant and modest at the same time, which means half of Greninja's moveset, if it ends up being a mixed attacker, will not get that nature boost and... These Pokemon that I built based off either modest, all special attacks, or adamant, all physical attacks, won't hit as hard. It's kind of a win-win. So if you don't know what Assault Vest does, uh, Assault Vest greatly increases your special defense stat. On top of that, the limiting thing is you cannot use status type moves. So if you would like to use Helping Hand or Recover on Claude Sire, you would have to remove the Assault Vest. But I think the moveset here is really great because the first three moves are kind of the, the, the bread and butter. Your biggest support move you can do here is Acid Spray. There's going to be a common theme with these Pokemon about 
relying on acid spray and a spoiler all of these pokemon are special attackers because i think special attackers in raids have such a huge advantage over physical attackers because of how powerful acid spray is not only does acid spray lower the raid bosses special defense by two stages which is equivalent to your pokemon using a nasty plot but if all of your pokemon on your team are special attackers you all take advantage of that lowered special defense. Clawsire and a bunch of other Pokemon learn Acid Spray, so that has a lot of synergy together. On top of that, Acid Spray works through the Raid Shield, meaning once the boss resets its stats and puts up the shield, you'll need to Acid Spray again, but it will work through that. There are moves like Screech or Metal Sound or Fake Tears that does work like Acid Spray, but it doesn't work once a Raid Shield goes up. Uh, the Raid Shield blocks status type moves. Acid Spray will still go through and still lower the special defense. That's huge. On top of that, in order to terastalize, you need to use an attack three times. Using Acid Spray three times gives you the ability to terastalize. This is why Armor Rouge for Cinderace was so good. Because Armor Rouge could Acid Spray three times if it had no support to help it do that. And then on its fourth turn... It would be able to terastalize and use expanding force and get that huge damage boost in front of a negative six Cinderace. Going back to our previous example of fake tears, you could fake tears three times, but you would still have to attack three more times with a different move in order to terastalize. Now, in the case, if Greninja is a mixed attacker, Claude Sire is going to be able to survive any of the special attacks, no problem, because of the assault vest and the chilling water will be able to counter the physical type moves going in and also help the team. Just like Acid Spray, Chilling Water works through Raid Shield. Mudslap is here to decrease Greninja's accuracy, and that's kind of it. It's probably a move you're not going to hit a lot, but uh, if you have other Acid Sprayers and you don't need to worry about that, uh, decreasing Greninja's accuracy always going to be great. That's another opportunity for Greninja not to knock you out. That's less heals you have to do. Um, but your bread and butter is probably going to be three acid sprays and then earth power spam. Or in the case of a mixed attacker, you're going to maybe do some chilling water support if somebody else is going to do acid spray or vice versa. Now, if you do opt to run recover and helping hand, uh, I would still not remove the acid spray or earth power. And then I would maybe go with an item like soft sand to boost the earth powers attack. Now, here's some quick damage calculations. So what you're seeing here is... Uh, a modest Greninja using some of the moves that I think it could have that would be maybe the most threat to Claude Sire. What we're seeing here is about 55% damage from Blizzard, about 55% damage from Extrasensory, about 26% uh, damage from Dark Pulse, and 0% damage from Water Shuriken. Now that's with a Claude Sire with absolutely no investment. We're going to go ahead and put the Assault Vest on Claude Sire, and as you can see, it drops this down to about 18% from Dark Pulse, about 35% from Extra Sensory, and about 35% from Blizzard. We're now going to put 252 EVs, max EVs, into HP. And as you can see, Dark Pulse is doing about 15% damage, Extra Sensory about 30% damage, and Blizzard about 32% damage. And for the, for the sake of time, I'm going to put the 136 Special Defense into Claude Sire. And I'm just going to put up a light screen because I think light screen and or reflect are going to be vital to this raid. Ref reflect only if, you know, it has physical type moves. Light screen, assuming that it is a special attacker because of water shuriken. And we can see here two super effective moves, extra sensory and blizzard are not even breaking 20% damage on Claude Sire. This gives Claude Sire plenty of opportunities to use a heal cheer and or a defense boost. I saw some builds suggest the ability shield as a held item on Claude Sire, so the water absorb doesn't get turned off. But based on the Claude Sire I built here with the assault vest, uh, you're going to get more mileage out of your assault vest because assault vest is going to protect you against extra sensory and dark pulse and whatever other special move that Greninja might have. Whereas Ability Shield will only protect you from one turn, and that's that one turn where Greninja turns off your ability. With my exact build, if a Water Shuriken hits Claude Sire five times, it's only going to do about 30% damage. Meaning, 
that you're going to get so much more mileage out of your assault vest than you would with an ability shield. But this is why I spent so long calculating damage. I think it's very obvious that the assault vest is significantly better. And all we had to do was a quick damage check to figure that out. And I hope at least one of the takeaways from, <laughs> from going into the next five Pokemon is I really focused on the best possible movesets, the best possible EV spreads, and the best possible items, and the best po possible partners that can be standing to your left and to your right. This is what it would look like if your ability was shut down and a light screen was up. Speaking of light screens, we have a light screen setter. Uh, we have Klefki with the ability Prankster. It is a steel and fairy Pokemon. The moveset here is Psychic, Calm Mind, Light Screen, and Metal Sound. Uh, the nature being calm, other possible moves Reflect and Thunder Wave. Metal Sound does the same thing as Acid Spray, except it won't work when a shield is up. Uh, at, at that point, you can go ahead and call Mind and start powering up, because usually what happens is the shield goes up, the stats get reset, you'll have your Acid Sprayers in place to re-Acid Spray. You can power yourself up with Call Mind, to start then finishing the boss off. Klefki has the ability to bring Reflect, again, if it's a mixed attacker, and for whatever odd reason, if it was a physical only attacker, you just replace Light Screen with Reflect. Uh, we're gonna put Light Clay on Klefki. That will let Light Screen and Reflect last for eight turns instead of five turns. This is actually, this is absolutely great. This is gonna protect everyone on your team. Uh, Greninja or any other raid boss does not have a way to clear that. The one exception is if Greninja does have access to Brick Break, Brick Break would, re would break the screens. You could just reapply them after that and still get the benefits from other moves that he would use. Uh, we have 252 in HP, 252 in special defense, 4 in special attack. Again, in a situation where Greninja could be just a physical attacker, we just flip the special defense to defense. But like I said, I ran every one of these Pokemon under all of Greninja's adamant physical moves, and all of Greninja's modest special moves, and they all survive. None of them get close to being one shot. In Klefki's case, once you set up a screen and or a reflect, not only are you good, but the rest of your team is good. Klefki will have the steel Terra type. You could maybe argue because Klefki has a psychic type move to go psychic Terra type. But Steel has so many resistances, changing to Psychic just opens up an opportunity for you to be weak to Dark Pulse or Night Slash. So I don't know if I would lean that way. You would get more damage by switching to a Psychic Terra type, but I think you're losing way too much from a support Pokemon to switch from Steel to Psychic. Uh, but if you know what you're doing and you have a lot of support, by all means, pick whatever Terra type you want. I just don't think for a person doing this raid for a weekend, it's worth the 50 shards to change from Steel to Psychic with the risks at hand of Dark Pulse and or Night Slash if Greninja has those moves. We're going to move on to the other Sluggy Boy. Uh, this is probably the second most talked about Pokemon besides Claude Sire, uh, and it's going to be Gastrodon. Gastrodon has the ability Storm Drain. What that does is it works like Water Absorb, except that uh, when you get hit by a water type move, it will boost your special attack. This pairs really well with Acid Spray because Acid Spray is going to lower their special defense. You're going to be able to increase your special attack. Gastrodon is one of the Pokemon that could get close to one-shotting Greninja because of how Acid Spray and Storm Drain really synergize with together. We're going to go... Uh, this is going to be a modest build because... Uh, Gastrodon doesn't have a lot of ways to boost itself up. Doesn't get access to like Sword Stance or Nasty Plot, um, which is kind of what hinders it. But we're going to do a Modest Nature. Uh, it will, it, it does have the access to Clear Smog. We would maybe Clear Smog if we see Greninja doing weird things like Double Team or Sword Stance. Um, we have ways to deal with Sword Stance, which would be Chilling Water. But our Gastrodon build will be Earth Power, Mud Slap, Recover, and Helping Hand. I mean, ideally, you could put Clear Smog instead of Mud Slap. My only, the only kind of reason Mud Slap is there is because I'm very worried that people will put Clear Smog there by default and then Clear Smog away the acid sprays. Clear Smog removes both positive and negative stuff. So, hey, if you're unfamiliar with what Clear Smog does, 
be wary. Don't clear away other people's acid sprays. Gastron's not going to be able to die here. It has recover. Now, I know what everyone is thinking. What about Grass Knot? Grass Knot, out of all of these calculations, is probably the highest here. But like I said, none of these Pokemon will be one shot. All of them will have to be minimum two shot, but almost every single move is either three, four, or five shot. Now, the nice thing here is uh, Gastron will be able to recover through this. A simple defense cheer will really help. I'm going to show you what a defense cheer looks like. So if somebody on your team just goes ahead and defense cheers, uh, we see a really big damage reduction. And I'm going to put a uh, light screen on top of that defense cheer. And now we're looking really good. I normally put uh, 252 into HP because this does cover both special and physical it also lets you use these other pokemon in five and six star raids but in this case uh gastron benefits the most from its special defense stat uh going up in the case of these dark pulses extra sensories grass knot and blizzard you do take a little bit less damage by completely investing in special defense but if we're in a situation uh with three clawed sires and one gastrodon the three clawed sires can bring Greninja down to negative six in a single turn. If they all hit acid spray, the Gastron can go ahead and defense cheer turn one. Turn two is really funny because the Claude Sires could all chilling water the Gastrodon to give it a plus three in its special attack. During that turn, the Gastrodon's not going to take any damage from the chilling water, but the Gastrodon could either recover or heal, heal cheer. Turn three, Claude Sires can do the same thing, chilling water into the Gastrodon to give it plus six at that point. At this point, either Gastrodon can heal or attack cheer to give it a little more oomph. And then turn four, the Gastrodon can go ahead and do a plus six earth power into a negative six Greninja. And that should be enough to uh, one shot. Now, your stars would have to align. You would have to have three Claude Sires standing next to you knowing what they're doing. You'd have to not get crit by Greninja. The whole point of this example is to show that there's so much synergy between Claude Sire and Gastrodon that even one of each on a team is going to really help you out. Uh, Gastrodon's Terra type here is ground, soft sand as the item. Keep in mind too, Greninja can boost your special attack anytime Water Shuriken hits you. I think Gastrodon would be an S-tier Pokemon if it had some way to boost its own special attack. But uh, the Pokemon around you can boost it. And we hope that Greninja will water Shuriken and or Liquidation into you to boost it yourself. But Gastrodon is a stellar pick here. The next Pokemon we have here is Hydreigon. Uh, Hydreigon has the ability Levitate. Like we said earlier with Klefki, uh, we're going to keep it as a Dragon Terra type. We could maybe change it to a Ground Terra type to get the benefits from Earth Power, but we open ourselves up to being weak to Water type moves. And if there's one thing we know for sure, Greninja will have some sort of Water type move. Um, so I don't think it's really that great to lose our Dragon type resistances uh, for a bunch of damage because of the amount of Acid Spray we have support wise. Hydreigon has a couple things that other Pokemon up to this point haven't had. So we have the Earth Power. That's a common theme. It's a super effective special move. That special super effective move pairs really well with Acid Spray. It has Snarl. This will cover any special attacks that Greninja has. Uh, just like Chilling Water lowers Greninja's physical attack, Snarl will lower Greninja's special attack. Uh, in case Greninja has Smoke Screen, Double Team, Swords Dance, and that becomes obnoxiously annoying. We do have Taunt, although Taunt will not work once the Raid Shield is up. And then finally, we have a way to boost our own attack while everyone else is Acid Spraying. We can go ahead and Nasty Plot. Now, in the case where Greninja is possibly a mixed attacker or just a straight-up physical attacker, we can replace Snarl with Reflect and or replace maybe even Nasty Plot with Reflect if we need to control the damage output from Greninja. I think Focus Energy is also fun to use. I don't think it's better than Nasty Plot. It could be used instead of Nasty Plot. I, it depends on how lucky you feel with crits. We're going to do 252 HP, 252 special attack, and 4 speed. I did look into maybe lowering the special attack to maybe put some more EVs into either special defense or um, physical defense, but there was not a good enough trade-off. 
Uh, we really want to have as much damage possible coming from High Dragon, and 252 in HP was just, it covered all the bases just just fine. The item we are giving High Dragon is Absorb Bulb. I don't think a lot of people know what Absorb Bulb does. It was introduced in Gen 5, and when uh, you are hit by a water-type move, it will increase your special attack. Because we know that Greninja 100% has a water type move, uh, that will give us a plus one. So what's really great is um, a nasty plot plus the absorb ball will put us at a plus three. And with the acid sprays happening from other Pokemon, Greninja being a negative four, negative six, we're just going to do a really great amount of damage with Hydreigon's huge special attack. Again, I could show you damage calculations of every move of like, what about Ice Punch? What about Blizzard? I assure you that this Hydreigon build can survive those. And I just want to remind everyone, Defense Cheer is incredibly powerful. Light Screen is incredibly powerful. Snarl and Chilling Water are incredibly powerful because not only does it benefit you, it benefits your team members. This is probably my most favorite build here. We have Toxtricity with the ability Technician. Toxtricity is an electric poison type Pokemon with the electric terror type. It is also wearing an Assault Vest. Like I said earlier, Assault Vests don't let you use status type moves like Helping Hand, Recover, Taunt, Charm. So if you do want to use those moves, you have to remove the Assault Vest. The great thing here, though, is the Assault Vest works so well on Toxtricity. We're starting off with the Acid Sprite, my absolute number one move in raids. It will lower Greninja's special defense by two. We have Snarl Control to control Greninja's special attacks. Benefits the whole team. We have Nuzzle. Nuzzle is not only going to do a little bit of damage, it's going to paralyze Greninja. It's going to slow it down. That's great. On top of that, Nuzzle works for the Raid Shield. So when Greninja resets its stats, puts up the Raid Shield, we can Nuzzle through the Shield and paralyze it again. Again, slowing Greninja down and making it lose turns is so huge in these raid battles. And then we have Thunderbolt to do damage. While Thunderbolt is not a super effective move, because of the Terra type, because of Stab, and because of the negative six we're going to get from Acid Spray, Thunderbolt is going to do a significant amount of damage. If Greninja is a physical attacker or uh, really leaning into the physical attack because it's mixed, uh, we could replace Snarl with Charm, and if Greninja is going to do ninja stuff like Double Team or Smokescreen, we have another Taunt option. If that's the case, I would remove Assault Vest and put something like Magnet on so you get a little bit of more electric damage. The reason we're running Technician is because three of these four moves are under the threshold of Technician, meaning they will just naturally do more damage. Uh, it doesn't matter which color Toxtricity you pick, uh, we just want the Hidden Ability Technician. And another point here, you might notice that uh, none of these Pokemon have Leftovers or Black Sludge. The reason I don't prefer those held items in raids is because they waste so much of your timer. They waste everyone's timer, right? Because everyone has a shared 10 minute timer. I don't think the return you get health wise justifies enough of the diminishing timer. You might see builds of bulkier Pokemon like Claude Sire running leftovers or black sludge but the reality is claude sire claude sire is one of the bulkiest pokemon compared to everyone else it's not worried about dying we have other pokemon that are a little bit more frail that would die sooner than something like a claude sire so like the little bit of health claude sire is getting every turn isn't the like core issue keeping everyone else alive is is just as important and I don't think the return that you get from the health is worth the dialogue making the timer tick down even more. The one exception to that, I think, is Shell Bell. I think Shell Bell, you do get enough HP back to be worth using if you're hitting hard. But it's really hard for me to recommend Leftovers and Black Sludge. Because like I said, you see them on bulky Pokemon. And bulky Pokemon aren't really the problem in raids. They're not the ones dying over and over again to reduce the timer. Our final pick here is another screen user. Um, but can do a little bit more damage than our previous screen user of Klefki. Uh, we're doing Rotom Wash. Rotom with the Electric Terra type. Uh, using Light Clay that's going to extend those screens out. Again... 
I'm heavily predicting that Greninja will be a special attacker or at least have Water Shuriken and a couple other special attacks. That's why all these builds are special defense heavy and have light screen as the main screen. Rotom can learn both. So in case of a mixed, we have both light screen and reflect. Helping hand is always a great option on all of these raid Pokemons. It's one of the, my top 10 moves in raids. Rotom has a way to boost itself with nasty plot. And then Discharge will be able to do damage. Now, it's not doing super effective damage, but like Nuzzle, it has uh, Nuzzle has a 100% a chance to paralyze. Discharge has a 20% chance to paralyze. That does work through Raid Shield, just like Nuzzle does. I know a lot of Pokemon fans recently discovered the power of stored power. And I think a lot of Pokemon fans over the Cinderace has, uh, have experienced the duds that were stored power. You could, you know, if, if this is the first time watching this YouTube video, I would really appreciate a like, a subscribe, all that stuff. But I bet you could comment down below whether like you're probably going to see 50 50. You're probably going to see people being like, oh, my gosh, stored power saved me. I absolutely loved it. And you're probably going to see other people comment every slow bro I sat next to iron defense, nasty plot. And then its stats were wiped and it didn't do any damage. And we lost. There's a just like belly drum. Stored power has a huge risk. That risk is uh, waiting too long and having the boss reset your stats. Now, I know some people might be like, well, not if you do it right. That's assuming everyone's on the same page as you. <laughs> and I like to do my raid builds as being really helpful. If it's just you and your significant other or you and a friend and then two randoms or you and two friends and an NPC, I do like, I think it's very obvious by now, all these Pokemon work excellent together um having a clawed sire next to a hydragon next to a klefki next to a toxicity i really can't see how that team loses with the basic under with the basic mechanics i'm teaching today now rotom has a really wild uh ev spread here um i used to use rotom in competitive uh rotom was one of the pokemon i i used to uh, get through the player cup stuff we're gonna do 252 hp 100 special attack Four defense and then 152 special defense. There might be some people unfamiliar with vitamins. I just want to explain this real quick. The easiest way with with giving your Pokemon vitamins, some would say maybe intense uh, EV spread like this, is really simple. First, start with any of the EVs that are can be divided by 10. So in the case of special attack, it's 100. That's perfect. Uh, vitamins give you 10 each. So that's 10 special attack vitamins and that gives you exactly 100 so always start with the number that 10 can go into so whether that's 40 which i think was on an earlier build um in this case we're going to start with 100 very easy 10 times 10 is 100 uh next i always go into the one that is maxed so in this case that would be 252 hp we could either do 26 vitamins uh if you want to save a little bit of money you can do 25 vitamins and then two HP feathers. So 25 HP ups, 2 HP feathers, 25 times 10, 250 plus 2. Next, you want to do the lowest one, which in this case is defense. That's 4. That's just 4 defense feathers. And then the last one, you're good. You can't mess it up because it's the last stat you're doing. So you could either do 16 special defense, that'll finish it off, or you could do 15 vitamins, special defense vitamins, and then plus 2 feathers. So that's how I always do it. Uh, always do the one that uh, 10 can go into. Then always do the maxed one. Then always do the very lowest slash small one. And then do that like weird one, like 152 or 156. <laughs> so I hope that helps with the vitamin stuff. Vitamins are 10. Feathers are 1. And that's uh, all six. I made four more. Um, but... There's a lot. Now, before anyone says, what about this Pokemon? What about that Pokemon? What about this Pokemon? Uh, hopefully I don't sound like a broken record. None of these Pokemon are physical attackers. And that's because physical attackers cannot take advantage of how powerful Acid Spray is. That's why there's no Garchomp. That's why there's no Gallade. Um, that's why there's no physical Lucario. Although a special Lucario would be fine here. Does that mean all physical attackers are bad? No. There is no equi equivalent to physical, a uh, physical acid spray. A uh, Grav Apple is kind of close, but literally only one Pokemon learns Grav Apple. 
<laughs> grab apple does kind of the same thing as that spray just not as good but also just because i say that these six are my favorite and these six i calculated every move under the sun for doesn't mean that other pokemon aren't bad um just some quick ones vaporeon seems totally fine magneton seems fine gudra actually seems fine the only worry with gudra is a physical greninja if it's completely a special Greninja, uh, Gudra is actually an all-star. Toadscrewl seems great, minus any possible ice-type moves. Toadscrewl also gets access to Acid Spray. Gudra also gets access to Acid Spray. And uh, a special Lucario seems great. Uh, I could keep naming Pokemon that seem okay, but those Pokemon either took a little bit more damage than I wanted compared to these, or they just didn't synergize a hundred percent with what i have here i'm thinking about that gudra 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 was really good until i calculated ice punch and then i was a little bit worried <laughs> but gudra with acid spray actually not bad as for terra types you notice that i have a lot of the basic terra types it's mostly because it's really expensive to change terra types and changing into something like a psychic terra type for some of these pokemon or a ground type terra type a ground Terra type for some of these Pokemon really open you up to a couple more weaknesses that Greninja have. If you have those and you're and you're comfortable using those, by all means, do that. But just be cautious of running the Pokemon around you because we have a lot of light screeners, a lot of chilling water dealers, a lot of snarl users. Um, that should be fine. Remember to defense cheer. Remember to heal. Um, but if you need any help with Greninja. I will be hosting Greninja raids all weekend on my Twitch channel. We helped hundreds of people over both weekends of Cinderace, and we carried some crazy Pokemon through. Some people came through and they were like, I only have a level 100 Coridon. I only have a level 100 Mimikyu. I only have a level 100 Skeledurge. We were able to carry them all through because of the synergy of these Pokemon that I built. They all work together. Um, and because they work together so well, uh, they're able to help one or two non synergistic pokemon go through the raids anyways i hope this was informative uh once we get greninja's moveset finalized i will i will go back and maybe tweak some of these with the situation of cinderace the slowbro the pelipper and the armor rouge didn't have to get touched at all their movesets were pretty flaw free so i guess i was Pretty happy with uh, my damage calculations before Cinderace came out because it really showed that we covered all our bases for Cinderace. So thank you for watching. I'll try to make more content and more guides. And the best thing, if you guys like them, uh, I don't know, share this video, tell a friend. I want people to not feel like they're a weak link. Um, that's kind of really the whole reason I make these guides is so people feel confident and they they feel like they can do it without other people telling them that they were the problem. So I want people to feel confident. I want people to have fun. I want people to be able to get Greninja. So um, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.